good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me well. As Mike uh, so eloquently said, I stepped into it. So here I am. I'm wearing my bulletproof vest under my sweater. Uh, but uh, as Mike mentioned, this is an information sharing session. So, you know, we welcome any questions you have. We'll try and answer them. Just, we don't know everything. I'm sure we're going to learn some things from you guys today. You're going to have some questions and comments where we'll learn some things. So that's what we mean by information shared. So uh, glad we had such a big turnout and hopefully this presentation helps you. So Mike, let's try and go to the next slide. Let's see if we can. <laughs> so yeah, I'm on the next slide, everybody, just in case. <laughs> just to see where the issues are. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully everyone can see that. No. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go through the agenda for today. Right, memorize that. No, I can look at my slides here. I'm, I'm good. You want to run it? Yeah. I'll do that. Thank you. So our agenda for today, uh, first we want to talk about what, what is our purpose here today? What do we want to accomplish? Um, the next, what is cutting the cord? Uh, as I've gone around the community over the last couple months, people have been using this term about cutting the cord. That's why I named the presentation Cutting the Cord. So we'll talk about what that means. What do we mean by cutting the cord? Okay, um, then we'll get into what are the pros of cord cutting? What, what are the good things about cord cutting? Possible good things. Uh, and then the cons of cord cutting. You know, what are the negative aspects of cord cutting? Then we'll get into how to cut the cord and the equipment you need to be able to cut the cord. We'll talk about some bundled streaming service providers. Uh, we'll give you some definitions for some of the words that we'll be using today. We'll go over a few frequently asked questions. I'll do a summary of the presentation that I'm giving today. And then I'll turn it over to Bill. Bill will get into a little bit more of the technical aspect of how to go ahead and stream, you know, once you cut the cord. And he'll also give you a Amazon Fire Stick demonstration, uh, how to use that to turn your, what I call, dumb TV into a smart TV. And I'll, and I'll talk more about that. So, so let's get into it. What is the purpose of today? As Mike mentioned again, to give Harbor Bay residents the information and tools they need to determine if converting to streaming is the right decision for them. Okay, so that's our purpose today. What is cutting the cord? What do we mean when we use that phrase? It's basically a euphemism for getting rid of whatever bundle of channels you, you subscribe to from, I, I assume most of you have cable here, so that's what we're pretty much referencing, but if you have satellite or broadband. And what that means, just a little bit, um, if you have a cable provider, like I'm assuming most of you do here, that means that you get your TV through the cable network, through the cable company. Broadband is through the telephone wires, through the telephone company. And then satellite, that's direct TV, dish TV. If you have a dish on your roof, you get your signal from a, uh, a satellite. So that's what dish is, or uh, satellite. So, some of the pros of cord cutting, and there may be more. These are just some of the ones that we thought of. Some providers offer, offer no contract. I personally cut the cord two years ago. Um, I, I use YouTube TV. I've had it for at least two years. I used Fubo TV first, um, and I didn't particularly care for it. So, because there's um, no contract, for Fubo or YouTube TV, I switched over to YouTube TV. So it's a monthly fee you get charged, you're not locked into a contract, which can be a benefit because, you know, with your cable company, you're usually locked into like an annual contract. Um, streaming, it allows you to choose the content you want to watch. Um, but possibly with your cable company, you're at the mercy of signing a contract that gives you 500 channels. You may only watch 15 or 20 of those channels, but you don't have an option. 
So by streaming and choosing the right package that's right for you, you, you can pick and choose the package you want for the content you want to watch um, and the appropriate amount that you want to pay for that. Um, as Mike also mentioned, um, part of the concern here is the cost going up for the, your cable fees. Um, so by cutting the cord and going to streaming, you may possibly be able to save money. And it all depends on quite a few things. Number one, how much are you paying today? Some people are on a promotional plan with their cable contract, so it may be less. Other people, it may be significantly more, okay? So it really depends if you're going to save money, what you're paying today, and what you're looking at possibly going to tomorrow. Um, there also might be less equipment by streaming as opposed to cable. Again, I use YouTube TV. No wires, no boxes. I use the same remote that I have on my smart TV. So my TV's over my fireplace, and it's just plugged into the outlet behind it, and it connects to the router in my office. And I use the same Samsung remote that I use for my TV for YouTube TV. And again, I'm not um, trying to sell you on YouTube TV. I, I'm, Bill and I are giving you our personal experiences. Um, so hopefully that helps you. Um, uh, another pro of cord cutting is that you're not dealing with a provider that is a monopoly and gives you no choice of provider. So, as we all know, there's only one game in town in Harbor Bay when it comes to cable. Um, by streaming, you have different choices, different options, which can be a good thing. Uh, I, found, I find my personal experience, there's less customer interface. I don't know if anyone has called the cable companies customer service department <laughs> and loves it, not my name. Uh, but uh, I have not had problems. The only problem you'll have is with your internet, which could, call, and that doesn't, that happens rarely, but it's not the TV service, it's the internet, if that makes sense. And we can talk more about it if you have questions about that. Um, okay. Uh, cons of cord cutting. So, okay, if you don't have a smart TV today, um, you would have to purchase either like a Roku, an Amazon Fire Stick, which Bill is going to show you shortly, an Apple TV device, um, but you'd have to purchase a, st a streaming device to convert your dumb TV into a smart TV. So there's an extra, you know, you have to pay out 60 or 70 or whatever it is for that extra device. Um, and as I mentioned, it, then you also have to um, uh, use a separate remote for that. So if you're using a Fire Stick or a Roku, you have a separate remote control that you have to use from your TV's remote control. Okay, um, and again, may, as I mentioned earlier, just because you're cutting the cord and streaming doesn't mean that it's necessarily less expensive, depending how much content you want to watch, how much you're paying now. So you really look, need to look at your overall situation to decide whether it's right for you. Um, and then there's a little bit of a learning curve, as it is with anything, to set up your account. Basically, you're connecting your TV to your uh, router, um, your internet router. So. And then getting used to using the remote control. If it's a separate remote control, if you have a device like Roku or Fire Stick, you'd have to get used to using that remote control. Um, you know, so there's a, there is a little bit of a learning curve. Okay, now we get to the best part, which is how to cut the cord. Okay? So the first thing you need to do is determine what kind of TV you have. And Bill will we'll get into it a little bit more too. But, uh, so you need to determine whether you have a smart TV or you have a, quote, dumb TV where you need to get a device to convert your dumb TV into a smart TV. Yes? Is there a way to keep that slide from yeah. going in and out? No. Because no. it's very hard to it goes to blank and then it comes in. Uh, no, we were having issues like, with the projector or something or the before, so unfortunately no. But we're going to be sending out the presentation afterwards. We apologize for that, but um, so um, 
So anyway, um, how to cut the cord. So the first step is, as I mentioned, you have to determine if you have a smart TV or if you need a Roku, a Fire Stick, an Apple device to convert your dumb TV to a smart TV. Okay? If you do have a smart TV, you have to be able to uh, make sure that smart TV can connect to your router, to the internet. Okay? And then the third thing, which is probably the most important thing, is determine the content or channels uh, you like or need to watch. Okay? Um, I'm a, as some of you probably know, I know Tommy knows, I'm a fanatic Mets fan. I know, might be. And uh, so YouTube TV does not have the Yes Network on it. So if you like to watch Yankee games on the Yes Network, the only streaming package that allows the Yes Network is direct TV streaming. But I found out last night, someone had mentioned to me that apparently Yes is coming out with their own streaming package, supposedly before the baseball season starts. So it would be a separate fee that you would pay for a separate um, streaming uh, access, like a Netflix or whatever. So maybe it's $12 a month you'd have to pay separately if you don't have um, direct TV stream. Okay? So, but I get, I get about 100 channels on my um, YouTube TV. And I'm going to get into your local channels, your local sports. I'm going to get into that a little bit too. Because I know that's one of the big things with people thinking about cutting the cord. You want to be able to get your local news channels, whether it's New York, Philly, whatever. You want your local sports channels. I'm going to get into that. Okay. Um, so step four is, uh, is to go to the websites for the different streaming services uh, to see what packages they offer. And I'm going to share some of those with you. Um, what channels are included, if they have a contract, you know, how much it is, etc. Also, I highly recommend, and that's one of the things we're doing today, is talk, talk to your neighbors, talk to your uh, friends, talk to family, ask them what they have. If you know people who have already cut the cord, ask them what they have, if they're happy for, with it, how much they're paying. Um, my brother has eight grandkids, and I say that his 13-year-old daughter, Mia, is his IT technical support. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. So. And that's actually how I started streaming. My son recommended that I cut the cord and start streaming. So that, that's kind of how it works. So definitely talk to people and get more information. Um, yes, John? Yes. Ken, do you have your own modem router? I do not have my own. So I pay Comcast every month for my own. But I'll, I'll, we'll get into that too. But you have the option of either getting your own modem router combination or having Comcast, if that's what you use for internet, providing you with. And there's pros and cons of that. Go ahead, John. The other thing I wanted to mention is that people may not have their own uh, smart TV. They may have their own uh, uh, smart DVD player. Yeah. Right. And you can operate off that as well. Correct. Good, good point. See, this is where I was saying that, you know, we're going to learn something today also. So this is why you need to talk to people and you know, and, and get information, so good point, John, thank you. Um, okay, step number five, very important. A lot of people are worried, what if I cut the cord and something happens? I can't, you know, watch my TV. You don't have to cut the cord first. You can start streaming first. Most of these um, streaming packages, uh, YouTube TV, Hulu, uh, they have a free trial. So you can go ahead and stream while you still have your, your cable to see if you like it, okay? And again, like I mentioned, a lot of them don't have a contract. So you can try it. If you don't like it after the first month, you can cancel it. So. It's not the lot of layers, it's the other one. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, okay. Step number six. Yeah, probably get feedback for this one. So, uh, as I mentioned, um, try the free trial. If you like it, sign up for it. If you don't like it after the first month you sign up, you can cancel, because most of them don't have a contract. Um, and if you're happy with the streaming service, you know, 
Uh, then you can contract, contact your cable provider or whoever and cut the cord. Okay, so again, you don't have to cut the cord first and be without TV. You can try the streaming services first and then cut the cord. Uh, equipment needed to cut the cord. So, first of all, you need internet. Okay, because you need to connect from your TV to the internet through your router or modem. Um, you know, we were talking about it before. Some people talk about satellite internet. I don't know too much about it. I don't know anyone who even has it, but Bill was even saying it may be very expensive, and I don't know how reliable it is. So, um, uh, as I mentioned, the router, you can either use the one that's provided by, you know, your cable company or whatever, or you can purchase your own. And there's kind of pros and cons to that, too, because in my, this is just Ken's thoughts. If you buy your own, as, as we know, there's a thing called Moore's Law when it comes to technology. The faster technology changes, the faster it's going to change going forward. So as fast as it's changed in the last five years, it's going to change even faster. Going. So they're always upgrading things. And if you buy your own, you know, you may, after a while, you may find out that maybe you need to get another one or whatever. Whereas if you, let's say you have it through your cable company, theoretically you can just go and trade in for an upgraded one. Just, just Ken's thoughts on that. Some people believe, you know, it's better to buy your own. So, um, as I mentioned, if you don't have a smart TV, either you can either go buy a smart TV or you can convert your quote dumb TV into a smart TV uh, using Roku, uh, Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TV um, to convert your dumb TV to a smart TV. Hey Ken. Yes. Is is having a Fire Stick on a smart TV redundant? Uh, I would say so. Bill, what would you say to that? We have stick. a smart TV that I don't think is even set up because the Fire Stick will do. Smart TVs had built in applications. And a lot of those applications, there's many different ways to do the same thing. So a Fire Stick is a device that allows you to take the developer options and to allow new applications to be loaded instead of what's on there. Most smart TVs won't allow you to do that. I'm going to talk about a, a particular, two particular apps that we use, my wife and I, uh, Cinema and TTV. If you have a smart TV, you can't go in to program with, the, with what's made available to you for you to load those things. So for us, those are critical applications. And we just go straight to the Fire Stick. I, I, I don't know, have you ever used ours? No. Uh, smart TV is just a TV that has the ability, it has an internet connection, so you can connect to your internet, and it provides certain built-in content or, or certain built-in apps. Um, this remote on this TV has buttons to directly go to uh, Disney Channel, Netflix, Prime Video, and something else I can't read because I'm blind. So when you have, you have the ability in a smart TV to use applications, but uh, Apple TV, is another device you can use to, to access content. Um, there's streaming services and then there's streaming devices. I don't know how much, if you're going to get into any of that. Yeah, I, I talked a little bit. Yeah, it's just, look, a lot of this stuff is confusing. And if you think you're going to walk out of here knowing everything and you're going to cut the cord next week, go in with realistic expectations and expect frustration. Because there is, your kids are going to hate you cutting the cord. Because you're going to call them whenever you're going to <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. You know, maybe. Don't I hate you? <laughs> the most important thing to come up with is the information that you have to decide what you want out of your connection. You want to decide if live TV is important to you or being able to access shows the day after they're broadcast or movies. My wife and I used to love to go to the movies. Now there's nothing in the movie we can't watch. A week after something is out there. The quality might not be as good. If you're a huge sports fan, you might find some of the streaming services are not going to let you see the fuzz on the ball. But you know, a, a super ultra high 4K whatever TV with a direct cable connection has the bandwidth in order to produce that level of resolution. So 
if you don't want to buy, and, and a fire stick is, is what, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, depending on which flavor you buy. And they get old, the newer versions. I think the latest, newest one is the uh, fire stick for 4K Max. And I think it's every day 50 bucks, but you watch for the sale, it's about 35. So even if you have or don't have a smart TV, it is highly probable after some of the things that are presented today that you might go directly to a streaming device. And you don't even care if you have a smart TV. I'm the one who put that worksheet together for all those questions. That's for all of you guys to understand some of the things that you need to know. I was talking to somebody before the seminar. Her SSID field was blank. She doesn't know the name of her network. She says, I know the password. I said, yeah, but if you don't know the name of the network, you don't know what you're connecting to. So that information sheet, I said put your TV model number in. So if you want to Google your model number and see the features and the things that are in that TV, but like I said, if you just go to a, remember a Chromecast was one of the first ones where you could use your computer or your phone and project that? That was just a device that allowed you to transfer it from another source. The Fire Stick is the source. So you don't need your computer, you don't need your phone. Although I use my phone as a keyboard, and I'll talk about that later. But you have a question, sir? Yeah, I have um, a smart TV, and I have the Amazon Stick. Okay. And I have a lot of different apps on the Amazon Stick. It's not on my Comcast. I like to just talk on to it. When I get the Amazon, because if you want the Amazon, you get all these extra things with it. Mm -hmm. You just talk to it right to the channel instantly. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to, you know, to worry about. You just put the apps, and download apps for free. Mm -hmm. That makes it real easy to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to add another layer of confusion. <laughs> I, I, know what you're I, have, I have a smart TV that has a low IQ. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you all may have that same TV. It's a sand phone that was produced in 2017. So it doesn't have a lot of the streaming apps. It has a set of streaming apps. And they won't allow you to add other streaming apps. Yeah. If your Samsung yeah. Smart TV was yeah. built after 2007, you're in that, great shape. That's what I was going to mention. Yeah. Oh, if you have an older Smart TV, that may be an issue also. I, I have a, one I bought when I moved here in August, and it, it works great, but everybody's different. <laughs> and I was just going to say, Lou, we call that user error. But <laughs> <laughs> I already got that problem. <laughs> Your, your smart TV is a streaming device. Yeah. Adding something like a Fire Stick, Apple TV, whatever, it makes your smart TV smarter, even to the point that you're probably not going to use your smart TV. So whether you do or don't have one, as long as you have an HDMI port, as long as you can connect the device to your TV, then it doesn't really matter what your TV can do. And just know how to change the inputs if you're going to want to use more than one device, like a DVD player or something else. So. Yeah, I, I added a Roku to that TV. So now it's real Roku, Fire Stick, <laughs> Apple TV. Those are all streaming, physical streaming devices as opposed to conceptual ones, applications. Okay, so um, just one quick thing. When, when, for, when my brother asked me for the 20th time, what is streaming? I basically take my phone now and I put it up on the wall. See that? That's your TV up there on the wall. So, so it's the same concept where you watch videos on your phone now, if you have a smart, uh, an iPhone, um, you know, that it's the same concept for your TV, okay? It's accessing the Wi-Fi or your internet, so. Um, hopefully the screen, there it is. So you'll see, here's a list of some of the streaming packages and their websites. Uh, when I, and that's the thing, when I say streaming packages, I, I, like I said, YouTube TV, I have, I get like 100 channels. You're, a lot of you are probably familiar with um, Netflix or Paramount Plus. That's a different, that's not a bundle. That's just, you go into their uh, streaming service, uh, and a lot of those create their own content, their own TV shows. Everybody's watching Tulsa King on Paramount Plus or whatever. They created that content, and that's the only place you can see it is on Paramount Plus. So that's how they get you to sign up for their service, is creating these shows that everybody starts talking about or movies on their uh, service. So again, there's the, um, a list of some of them that you can go out to their website and see what kind of packages they're offering now. Here's a couple. So this is Hulu. Um, if you can see in the middle there, it says uh, right now they're offering, it's uh, $69.99 a month. 
Uh, you have to go in there and see what channels were included in that. But, um, you know, let's say you pay $100 for internet. I don't know what people are paying. Um, and let's say you have to pay another $70 for your TV. That's $170 total. I don't know what you're paying today. If it's more or less. More. More. Okay. And, you, and again, I, you may have a promotional offer. I, I don't know. Um, that expires. and So that's why you have to look at it. Um, here's YouTube TV. Uh, and again, these are the websites you can go to and see what channels are included. YouTube is right now uh, $55 for your first three months, and then it goes up to $65. So again, you, you, you have to add what your bill is today and see what it would cost you if you convert it to any of these. I know there's some people here that I've talked to, because I've talked to a lot of people here, that are paying, I think there's some people paying like close to $300 for the TV, internet, phone, whatever. So if you can get down to $180, it might be worth your while, you know, again. Yes, sir, Tom. Uh, Ken, can you record a show that you're streaming? Yes, good question, Tom, very good. So the, yes, um, YouTube TV has a library, a, a DVR right on, you can record shows, good question. We have to record the Met games. And <laughs> oh, that's all of them. That was all of my TV. Uh, okay. Uh, some of the definitions I mentioned. Streaming. I took this right off the... Uh, that's another tool that you can use. Our friends Google and Siri. So, you, you, know, you know, what streaming service offers HGTV network? You know, you can Google it or ask Siri, and it'll come back and it'll tell you the streaming packages that channel is offering. Okay? So, streaming, you can see the definition in a second. There you go. A method of transmitting or receiving data, especially video and audio material, over a computer network as a steady, continuous flow, allowing playback to start while the rest of the data is still being received. You'll be quizzed on that. This, this is a speed reading course. Um, <laughs> content. I mentioned content before. You'll hear that word mentioned a lot these days. Content is just the channels and movies that a particular service offers. Okay? So that's, that's what it is. Um, provider. We talked about it before. A cable, satellite, broadband, internet company that provides TV, internet, um, etc. service. Okay, streaming device, um, as Bill talked about, it's uh, Roku, Fire Stick, Apple TV that connects your TV and converts it to a smart TV or a smarter TV. We're going to update the presentation. <laughs> and th those are just some of the popular ones. Right, exactly. You can actually buy a Fire TV, literally, where the exactly. Fire Stick is built into the TV. So you're, it's not a device that you're attaching. Um, so it's essentially a smart TV. It, it, it's all it, it's, it's a smarter TV inherent as opposed to. They also have a uh, Fire Stick, a uh, Fire Cube, which has a, a drive in it that if you're interested in recording stuff or whatever. So there are different devices. We're just naming some of the popular ones, and I'm sure new ones are going to come out yep. as, as time goes on. Bill, yes, sir. Real quick. Uh, there's multiple sticks. Now most TVs have maybe a, a limited amount of USB and HDMI ports in the back of the TV. Mm -hmm. Is there, a, two questions, is there a conflict if you only have like a one port where you have to keep switching sticks? Or is there a conflict if you have multiple sticks plugged in at the same time? Why would you have multiple sticks? I, well, I, if you I'm, use an Apple TV, okay, right? That's a stick. That's one port, right? right? And then I want to use a Roku. That's another port. So now you're using multiple ports on the back for different sticks to get different applications. Would that be a conflict? No, you just change your input. But if you don't, if you have, if you have four devices that require HDMI, and you only have, three, you know, if you have four devices, you only have three ports, well, then you don't have enough in your TV to support all your hard connections. What I'm questioning is. Once you find a streaming device, you probably can get everything you need out of that streaming device. Yeah, you can get Apple TV on Roku. I have a Roku TV. Yeah, right. And that's one thing I just, right. 
and, and Apple TV, it can be an application yeah. as exactly well as a physical right. device. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's where a lot of people get confused yeah. because you think it's one thing and it, 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 it's, yeah, it's an application as well as a, as that, a That's device. one thing you just, that Bill just mentioned. So there's two things. There's an Apple TV device to convert your quote, dumb, or not a smart TV into a smart TV or a smarter TV. And then there's Apple TV, the streaming service, where you go in and watch Coda, one of my favorite movies, that won the Academy Award. Um, that's, not, that's, again, Apple TV, where they create their own content and try and get you to go there when people start talking about whatever the show or movie is that they have on there. So. What about the user interfaces with these services? Any, any one better than another? Because I thought sometimes... A lot of that is just personal taste. Uh, look, the, she was asking if there is if, if there's one interface that's better than another. All of that is personal taste. What, depending on your background in technology, depending on your comfort with technology, what somebody finds very simple and very logical, somebody else finds very confusing. So I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all to that because I think it's just what you're exposed to and learning to work within the parameters of that application or device. Okay, so I mentioned before, what if I cut the cord and have problems streaming? That's why we recommend doing the free trials or even signing up for the service for a month and seeing if you like it uh, before you go ahead and cancel your cable or whatever service. Um, you know, get used to it. Um, how do I get my local news sports channels? I know that's a big thing, right? If I get rid of my cable, how am I going to watch? Yes. Uh, Grace is here. Fox New York. You got to watch that. <laughs> so we want to have like a, you can change the area code, a zip code. I'm sorry, I was kidding. The zip code in your account. So I have the New York, I have my area code zip code from where I moved from, up in North Jersey, so that I can watch the local New York news channels, okay? And also, I guess that's how I get asked why. They're cutting the cord out there, by the way. But anyway, um, so, and then the other thing is, so if you want to get the Philly local channels, you just go in and change your zip code to the, down here, probably, and you'll get the Philly channels, or put in a Philly uh, zip code. If you go to Florida for two months, let's say somebody goes to Florida for two months in the wintertime and you have a smart TV in Florida, log in your account in Florida and you can put in New York um, zip code and you can get the new, local New York channel. It's even simpler than that. CBS has metro areas just specifically for one. Philadelphia, New York, you don't have to switch, right. you don't even have to switch your, uh, your zip code on your account. Right. You can get them right in, right on, just switch. Is there a fee for that? Uh, no, no, okay. it's, that's a free service. Okay. CBS Philly, CBS New York, CBS Miami, okay. just, just jump on. All right, so, uh, so that, again, learn something today. CBS has a free service where you can switch, watch CBS and switch. Um, so, but, but again, to throw that into perspective, yeah. just because you can load the CBS app and you have access to some content, if you want, we use the CBS app and we have to log in every day, and it's a pain in the ass every day. But if you want to watch all the content that's available on CBS, they will show you some to bring you in. You can load the Fox app and you can pick your Fox network of choice, LA or New York or whatever. But if you want to go in and watch a program, they're going to say you need a subscription. So just because an application loads, and just because you can get it to make noise on one thing, it doesn't yeah. mean everything well, you see. Well, I'm talking successful. my first experience, Apple TV, all right? Okay. Uh, all those CBS channels you can switch over. Now, okay. it's the streaming version. It's not, the, it's not the network where it's continuous news, and you get the half hour hour. It's streaming. Mm -hmm. So you get the commercial in between. Right. You can skip the, most of the commercials and go on to that. So. They're, because they want to diversify and not be left behind, they're adding streaming, but it's the same content. Okay, like you said, like it could be way. delayed right. one day, six hours later, if you can live with that. Well, if you have cable TV, and my father and my, my brother like to like watch golf together, they live in different states. So my father's got cable, and my brother's got, if he's streaming, which, you know, one is behind the other. 
So he's seeing it three seconds later. Then, so my father reacts and he's like, you know, because he knows what's coming. So it could be a little, it could be a little weird in that yeah. case. I, it's, I have, I like to watch soccer, specifically Premier League soccer, and I have friends that I text with during certain games or matches. And my friend will text me, goal! I'm like, gee, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Three seconds later, I see the goal. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, um, so, okay, so, uh, and then um, lastly, um, people, we're not going to leave you hanging after this. Uh, we set up a, an email box where you can send questions to um, after the presentation, and we'll respond to your questions. Thank you. Um, so, in summary, what do we talk about? Oh, yes, we have a question. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to say, my wife and I, we, we cut the cable about six months ago with like right. yourself with YouTube TV. And uh, we love YouTube TV. But so, my, my recommendation would be to, like you were saying, that you could get a brief subscription to Hulu, yeah. YouTube TV, Hulu, is to go in, and it's free, and go in and try it. And learn the navigation of the streaming service that ha you happen to be using at that time and then go from there <laughs> and say is this something I really want to do or is it not? Now like YouTube TV, it's like it's similar to Comcast where you get a list of all the channels. Like how many channels do you watch? Ten channels maybe? You can move you can move all those channels up to the top so when you open it, there's your favorites right there. Um, and it's real easy to do. In fact, any questions you have, you can go on Google, Google your question, and you'll get answers to whatever your issue is. So, and one other thing about YouTube, <laughs> just so everybody, some of you may watch videos on YouTube. If you do, okay. Um, that's not the same as YouTube TV. If you go onto the home screen where you watch YouTube videos, and go to the left and scroll all the way down the bottom. That's where that's where the log is in for YouTube TV. But if you have a, once you have a smart TV and you have your account set up, there'll be an icon. Um, so on your phone, those are icons. You'll have them on your smart TV, and you download the YouTube TV icon and application. And then once you go into your TV, you just click on that icon, and it'll open up YouTube TV. So just to clarify that it's it's different. Um, and, yeah. and, yet, and yet another thing is uh, we're fortunate enough to have a second home in North Carolina. And I forget, I think it's $69 we pay for YouTube TV or 65 I forget. But our television service technically is only like $32 or $35 a month for each home. Because we use the well, same you just, service. Well, yeah, you just that's what I mentioned earlier. We yeah. just bring the same you're, 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 down So in. when he goes to North Carolina, if he wants to change the zip code, you know, or keep the New York zip code in his account when he logs in, he'll be able to watch the New York channels. No, we, don't have to do anything. we don't have to do anything. We don't have to do anything. That's because it's set up for New York here. Actually, it's set up for down there. <laughs> but every now and then, I'll get a, a thing will pop up on the screen. They want to know where I'm at. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> See, I used to <laughs> say no. Don't ever say, uh, don't ever tell them where you are. <laughs> so, um, what Preventing us from doing this. If I am a Jets fan, we record the game. But we like to record the game and then watch it later. How, how would I do that by streaming? Tom just asked that before. I have I have a DVR on YouTube TV, it's the library. I can record it in here. Would would uh, would I, well, yes, they do, because I, I used Fubo, Fubo before I converted over to YouTube TV. And what didn't you like about Fubo? That well, it could have been a couple things. So that was the first streaming service I converted to. And I had an old Roku I was using because I didn't have a smart TV. Um, and so it, it, the streaming was cutting out. Once I covered over to YouTube TV, no problem. 
So I don't know what it was, whether it was Fubo or whether it was the device I was using or my old TV or, you know, what it was. But, um, so. Can you on that for me? Because you couldn't hear what she was saying. What was your question, Helen? There's a mic right there, Carol. <laughs> All right, I can generally talk pretty loud. So, <laughs> so uh, I, we like to record the football game and then watch the local football game. <laughs> And then watch it later. Yeah. And I was wondering how I would do that because um, we like our sports, and you know we have NFL Red Zone, and we have you know all the uh, Madison Square Garden and all that stuff. So I just wanted to know what, how would I do that? What services would let me do that? Well, and he said that in every. Well, yeah, you can. I don't know about every, but I can tell you, Fubo and YouTube TV, you can record shows. It's got a, I, YouTube TV has a library, so you can record on DVR. No separate box, nothing. It just you records YouTube the TV, if, if, if you're on YouTube TV watching a football game, you can hit pause and then go over to where there's an icon for the library. Library, and yeah, correct. When, before you go in, it's a, check, uh, a plus sign. After you hit record, it'll be a check mark. And then it'll just record everything. And then you can, it's like talking. Yep. I actually like it better. I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, in fact, I think, I Go think ahead you here, can record every channel on YouTube TV forever. Exactly. It, it seems like there's a bigger capacity to record things. So Ken, you said you kept your router. Uh, that means that uh, you I kept my what? Router. Router. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that means, that well, that you kept Comcast your, is router. You're still getting your internet from Comcast. Yes. Yeah. Okay, what are the other choices? Uh, well, I mean, I hear people talk about satellite internet, but again, I think Bill mentioned that might be very pricey still, and I'm not sure how reliable it is. So. What about T-Mobile also? T-Mobile, T-Mobile 5G. They gotcha. give you a router. I don't know how good it is. Very right. Very and that's good. the thing, you know. So, but, uh, let, me, let me just try and clarify a couple of things. Certain terms are used incorrectly or, you know, uh, Yes, interchangeable. <laughs> if, if you have streaming by definition, the root definition of streaming is to bring content from the internet to whatever. Your, your, your phone, your laptop, your TV, whatever. It's bringing content that is coming from, it's internet based. That is tr that's the true essence of streaming. Now as far as when you had a cable service and you had a DVR which cost you 20 bucks a month and to have it in the bedroom was another 10 bucks a month, the equipment charges and that kind of stuff. You can buy something like, I believe the Fire, the Fire Cube mm -hmm. has a drive in it that will act as a DVR. So if it's really important to you to have a service that you can pull it in from. I also want to talk about the, you don't have to pay for a service because if you, if you get rid of the cable company and you have just an internet connection, whatever it may be, and then you start adding, well, it's eight bucks a month for this one, and ten bucks for that one. At some point, you might be paying more than the cable company yeah. because you're subscribing to all the services. And just, just that's why I, my personal is to look at bundles because you're gonna save a little bit of money by bundling rather than like Bill was just saying, where if you start downloading each individual one, you know. So go ahead, Bill. Sorry. Well, but I want to address the point that you don't have to subscribe to a service. That you can. There's ways around, there are plenty of applications out there that uh, will give you the content that you want and you don't need to pay a monthly subscription. So uh, I'm gonna show some stuff on the Fire Stick. It's just, Fire Stick is just my choice. I mean, there's, there's different devices out there. It's just the one that I prefer to use. And the way it worked years ago and the way it works now, it has changed over time. When we first started streaming, I, my son is into the Jets, so I like to watch the game, talk about it with him. We were getting CBS out of Chicago. So when Sunday came, there was, I, I, was, I was over at the bar watching the game. I wasn't sitting home watching the game because there was no street. Now that time, you know, things have improved. There's also a little bit of confusion with some stuff, like Paramount Plus is owned by the same corporation as CBS is. So if you go into Paramount Plus, you get access to some CBS content. Now, my wife joined the Walmart Plus program, and that gives you Paramount Plus for free. Yeah. So if you're already doing one thing, if you're a Prime member, then you get Prime Video. Prime Video has a ton of content because it comes automatically with your subscription. Right. If you're uh, an AT&T wireless customer, HBO Max is free. 
Okay. Another example. T-Mobile. Now, yeah. Now, to to high-speed internet is necessary to get things efficiently and effectively. There used to be. Does anybody remember DSL when the internet first came out? It was painfully slow and. You know, you could download a song if you had 20 minutes to download one of the songs. So now you're, you're streaming gigabytes. It used to be you were downloading, you know, small amounts of data. Now everything is large content. So we probably stream, I don't know, three, four hundred megs, uh, three, four hundred gigs a month. Because TV's always on, and it's always, it's always moving data. So if you have... The device that you use to connect to the internet, it's, it's only as good as the service provided. Mm -hmm. It was mentioned to me this morning that um, T-Mobile now has your own little modem that works off of a cellular signal. Comcast was the only game in town until T-Mobile came out because uh, DSL is not a viable option. There's no other cable companies that you can threaten one to go to another with. You can go with AT&T, but then other things might get wrapped into that. So it, it's kind of pick your poison and, and decide what it is you want. If live TV is critical to you and you don't have access to like the username and password of somebody that does have cable, I, I use my son's username and password to get into, to get the full access to all the major networks. So we basically pay for the internet service every month and nothing else. We don't, we're not a member of anything. I watch YouTube. If I don't want to sit, watch the commercials, then I can pay eight bucks a month so that there's no commercials between the things that I watch on YouTube. And that's the YouTube app as opposed to the YouTube TV right. function, which I'm not right. really familiar with. So. so I know we're getting a little short on time, or we're not going to run over or whatever, but uh, or three o'clock. Where are you getting your internet service from? From Comcast. From Comcast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and actually, I forgot. Um, I don't rent the modem. Right. I, I don't feel like paying fifteen dollars every month. Right. My modem was old. I did some research. I went to the Comcast page. I looked up the approved devices, and then I went and I googled each device to see, and I found an Aris modem that was about one hundred and fifty bucks. Right. So in a little over a year, I break even. Right. And then I don't have to pay for it. I've been paying for a modem and a router for years. Yeah. We had our last router. For, we had our last modem you know, for like 10 years. Yeah. And it, it just got so old and slow that it was time to get a new one. So, yes. Yeah. How? For all those cable people out there, I went down to Xfinity this morning. I'm not going to go through my conversation with you. <laughs> but, I, but I did go and get a phone number. But you mean, we have a problem when we call up and we get nobody when they put us on hold for two hours. Yeah. Supposedly, this number's a good number. If anybody wants to copy it, we do it. 1 800 934 6489. It's retention of block. Yes. All right. Now, you probably used it once before. For the veterans out here, I understand you can get a discount. You can get a discount so that I can go for the veterans. However, seniors also. I was told, after, after talking to this guy for a while, uh, I threatened him, by the way. <laughs> he says to me, you're good to go. You call up. My wife's very good at crying on the phone. I can't <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too good at that, so I let her do it. <laughs> but they will, most of the time, cut your bill down yeah. as you're a new person coming on board. Yes. I found out the more you had it, the more you charge it. In other words, you're a good customer. You think they cut you down a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, wow. Well, yes, yeah. sure. And that's the other thing. You can call them up and try and negotiate with them. Say, look, I'm considering other options. Is there anything you can do for me? Well, I told them all the yeah. five open communities were a good problem. Right. Which was part of mine. <laughs> and that goes really I said, you're going to get thousands of people out of yeah. We're on fixed incomes. Except a few of these millionaires. <laughs> Anyway, make a long story short, hopefully you have some money with these people. Maybe you can get a discount, and who knows, $30, $40, I don't know what you can get. I'm, my wife's going to try hard, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. But mostly this number's a good number. And 
Yeah. 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 Where did the guy lose, by the way? <laughs> 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 one, question, one question I have, okay, is you do the free trial. Well, the idea was well, what was on that side. Uh, and you do the free trial, and right, you do the one for my select copy of, right? You're happy with it. You say, okay, all right, I'm going to cut the cord off. Okay. You're watching, maybe a month or two goes by, maybe a year goes by. You start having problems. Is there something you can call at one of these things in case you have a problem and say, hey, my service is not working? Will somebody. You you talk, are you talking the about the t a streaming service? Yes. yes. Um, you can go on the website, I'm sure you can call customer care, but my experience has been no problem. If, if you have any problem, if it starts to freeze up a little bit, which you, I can tell you mine doesn't, um, it's probably your internet. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's caused by your internet, not the, the streaming service, TV service. Bill, you can let, let me go to a couple of comments. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm hesitating to use names of cable companies. I was just asked, what speed do you need? We have the minimum 200 meg speed. There's two of us Same and a couple of devices. This whole idea, the, the lady on the phone at Comcast, I told her, you know, I, I'm technical. I've been, I've been in the business for years and years. So I, I kind of know when I'm being led astray. And she was saying, well, upgrade your speed. And I said, no amount of speed is going to make that old laptop any faster. That's the problem. That's the bottom. So if I went from 200 megs to 1 gig, I'm still effectively getting crap on that device because my service exceeds the capacity of the device that's pulling. So there's, there's a lot of different layers to a lot of this. Just to go to some general cable company comments, or especially Comcast from experience. Number one, if you think you have a technical problem, or if they feel that they need to send a technician out, ask them for a Comcast employee. You do not want a contractor. I had a contractor come in, they get paid. He told me, he said, no problem. It doesn't work in the bedroom, we'll just run a new wire. I'm gonna drill a hole in your foundation, and I'm gonna run through you. I was like, no, you're gonna get the hell out of my house. And I called back, I asked for a supervisor, and I said, look, I'm tired of these contractors coming and not fixing the problem. Comcast guy comes in, Comcast employee, he says, you need a booster, he puts it in, screws it in, whatever else, gave me a couple extra remotes, a couple extra cables, said, had a nice day, and he left. Because he's paid to work all day long. The contractors are paid based on what they do. Whenever I call the cable company, what, before your package, before your promotion expires, once it's expired, you're behind the eight ball. Before it expires, it matters. And when I call, the first thing I hit on that menu is cancel service, because it takes you right into the retention department. <laughs> so you call 1-800-COMPOST, and when it says, what can I help you with? I go straight to cancel service. I don't care what my problem is. I go straight to cancel service, because then you get somebody that has access to different promotions and different things. And like I said, we, just, we use just internet feed. 200 megs is more than sufficient for us. So don't buy into this thing where faster, because the problem could be device related. Uh, yeah. My phone is faster than my computer. That's what the caveat is, all right? A smart TV is not even necessary. Here. As soon as you have 4K and HDR on the TV, right? And you have a box to speed it up, because the firmware on the smart TV is not as fast as the box. Correct. And that's where your problem is. Don't get caught up in smart TVs. Smart exactly. TVs are not, not that. Not that smart when it comes to streaming. That's so, why I said a smart TV can be smarter by augmenting it with a different device sure. and just ignore the fact that ignore. a camera can't do yep. anything. So, so just an HDR. HDR. Sorry. Uh, Bill and I will be sticking around a little bit afterwards if you have a question you want to come up to. Or no, I just want to. Are you done? Oh, no, I just want to go over the Finish summer. up and then I'll turn to you. Yes. If you have multiple TVs in your home, and you stream on all the TVs? If they're all either a smart TV or you have a device on them. You have, you have the same, yeah. same account, but you have to, yeah. You got three TVs and you use Fire Stick and you have three Fire Sticks. Right. Unless you want to move the stick to TV to TV. So I know people mention they're sport fans. I'm a big sports fan. I, and I'm a, some of you know I'm a huge Rutgers basketball fan. I have Big Ten Network on YouTube TV. Tomorrow at 12 o'clock at Madison Square Garden, Rutgers versus Michigan State on Fox. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> um, one other thing. Um, what, what do you guys do? I appreciate you guys doing this thing. Is, uh, uh, maybe not everybody here, but I think probably six people, including myself, saw the landline phone, okay, which we pay through Comcast. Uh, so you 
probably keep your way lines, which we do. We still either have to pay Comcast or I know you can go to back to Verizon. That's another. That's another. Uh, at, at some point, you're just you're just changing the location of where you're sending your money. Because if a landline is critical to you, then you're either going to get it through a double play or a triple play, or you're going to need a Verizon line or you know, whatever the provider is. I know we haven't had a landline, and I can't. Let Jay know. I checked that out. We did. Yeah. Six thousand cents a month. Yeah. <laughs> it's very it's very low impact for the landline. <laughs> All right. So uh, Tom, yes. Alright, go ahead, Tom then Lou. Uh, Ken, I'm a bottom line guy. I know. We're paying $210 a month. You have YouTube TV, whatever services you have in addition to that. Can I ask you how much you're paying a month? Well, can I ask you how much you're paying just for internet? You know, or you have a uh, bundle? Okay. okay, so I'm paying $108 for internet. <laughs> and, I, and I pay the $65 for YouTube TV. So it's like $175 total. What do you pay, Bill? We were, we were considered a new customer when we moved in two years ago, despite having uh, Comcast. So we got a $39.99, right. 200 meg promotion for two years. And it just went up by 10, but I called them and they knocked it down by five. And that's part so, of the problem. I think when I moved down here in August, I took my router with me. I was an existing customer. I think that may be the problem. I wasn't considered a new customer. So I didn't get the promotional. Some of you may have a promotional, which again expires at some point. You know, so when we were in Barnegat, I was paying about eighty dollars a month. Same cable company, same level of service. But the reward of being a customer for seventeen years was eighty dollars a month. But now I move thirteen miles, so now I charge me forty dollars a month. I ended up saving like forty to fifty dollars a month, and no boxes, no cables, nice and clean. I like the way it looks and works. I like YouTube TV. Just a personal choice. So. so why don't we go over the summary for today, and then I'll turn it over to Bill. So real quick, um, provide an overview of cord cutting and information to help you make a decision on whether it's right for you. Not everybody's going to think it's the right thing to do. Okay, It's, it's a personal choice. Uh, we gave you step-by-step -step instructions on how to cut the cord and convert the streaming. Uh, we provided you with several sample streaming bubble providers and websites uh, for further information. And then, as I mentioned, we set up an email for after, the, after today, the presentation. You can send us an email if you have specific questions and we'll get back to you. Uh, and then, Mike mentioned in the beginning, if there's interest, we'll provide a follow-up session for everyone. So, Okay, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bill, and uh, as I mentioned, we'll be sticking around for a little bit afterwards, so if you have other questions, by all means, come on up and, and see us. So, thank you. I came in early, and I set this up. This is a smart TV. I went into the menus. I went into the network section. I found the name of the network. I put the password in and now I'm connected to the internet on this TV. Built into this TV, you can see apps across the bottom. I want to go back to what I said before, and that is when you have something like a fire stick that you can, terms are used, uh, rooting, jailbreaking, uh, any of those terms as far as making, this, making the device do something that it wasn't normally out of the factory programmed to do, but can do. You will not find in many cases that your smart TV will allow you through the menus to get to the critical thing in the developer options, which is to allow third-party sources. So you're restricted by whatever apps you have. Now your TV might allow you to load certain apps, but not every app. I'm a big fan of cinema. We talked about that. Cinema cannot be loaded on all devices. So you just have to decide what sources you're looking for. There is, in the past, before all this technology stuff, you had a TV, you turned it on, it made noise, and there was a picture. When you cut the cord, you turn it on, this is what you get. It, it, there's, it's not just going to automatically start doing something. And if you start uh, paging through stuff, sometimes like the preview window, it'll download a little bit of a, a file and it'll play for uh, you know, 30 seconds or whatever. That's just bringing in a little bit of content, but then you actually have to enter the, the, the 
the program itself in order to see everything to have everything come through. So, with these applications, I, s I heard an ad this morning. Um, I was watching Fox TV live, and there was an ad for Sling TV. Forty bucks a month, they have a package at some level. But a lot of them, like anything, they have the introductory package, and then for a little bit more, there's no commercials, and for a little bit more, there's more content. There's always this reel you in, and then just get you to, to do a little more, a little more, a little more. So. Um, I'm going to switch off of the smart TV and I'm going to go to the smarter TV. One option. This, depending on how many ports you have and the kind of TV you have, some of them are automatic. When it's properly set up, the Fire Stick, you hit the home button, it'll switch you off of, let's say you have a DVD player and you were watching a DVD and that was HDMI port 2 and your Fire Stick or your primary streaming device, it's a good idea to put it on HDMI 1. So when I hit the home button, it'll switch to the port where the stick is it, by programming it. And you can program the TV you have so you can adjust the volume. This is a 4K Max Fire Stick, so it's got the extra buttons on the bottom. The previous versions did not have those shortcut buttons. So I am now, all right, this is, this is our Fire Stick. And we have across the top the all the applications that are available. I'm going to wrap around. Instead of going all the way over to the applications, I'm just going to go left, left to go over to here. Wrap around the corner. It's less buttons to go this way to get there than to go that way. But this is what the app thing looks like. Whatever is in the top row is what appears on the main home screen. All these other apps are available. And you can move things around as you choose. And just because you see something here, uh, crackles here, free TV and, and free movies. That generally means that it just has commercials. We didn't load it. It doesn't work. It just came built in. I could probably delete it. Don't really care. So any of the major networks, like I said, if you don't have a username and a password of an account that <coughs> pays for those services, like I said, I use myself. And I can get into all these apps and what they have. You would need to get a service like uh, a Sling or a, or a YouTube or, a, or whatever to get those live local channels. In Fox, for example, if you want to go up to News, if you go into Live TV, you can see all the different channels that Fox makes available. In NBC, for example, the NBC News works without any kind of login information, but if you want to watch NBC out of New York, then you have to have a username and a password for a cable service or for some service. Now, you can buy, let's say, CBS All Access is, I think, $7 a month. So if you wanted full access to CBS, like I said, if you get into a position where you keep buying subscription after subscription and one thing after another, you're taking your bill, you're bringing it down to your internet service, and then you're just building it back up in a different way. <coughs> Streaming is not for everybody. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be honest. Some people have difficulty with technology. Some people, they just don't get it. And, and it, you just have to have some understanding of basic technology stuff and a little bit of dexterity with, with the devices. Hey, I Bill, found, yeah. We have a question. Yeah. Again, when you're saying you're logging in, is that when you said you're using your son's Comcast login information? When you log into CBS? C C CBS, never fails to, CBS never fails to, every day, when CBS comes up, it comes up with a screen that says, Fox, for example, will give you, I think, uh, a certain amount of time before it tells you you need to log in. Your, your free viewing period has right. ended. I the same thing on Roku, but, mm -hmm. but okay. on Comcast, so I just say on Comcast subscriber, right. it keeps going. But you're saying you're logging in. What are you, what are you using as a login? We use my son's, son's email, his, com his, his, his yeah. Comcast, okay. no, his uh, Verizon Fios username and password to log into his account. <laughs> Is what I pay for a service that gives him CBS. Yes. Yeah. He, he, he's got he's got regular normal cable. Bill, 
you might want to mention, as we were talking before, Netflix is trying to now make it that you cannot log into somebody else's account. Uh, Password sharing. We, we have, like my son uses HBO Max, but he uses our account. We use his Disney account, and we log into Disney that way. But it's getting to a point now where Netflix is starting this, and it's probably going to uh, permeate to the rest of the uh, networks or the streaming networks that you cannot log into someone else's mm -hmm. account to get that on your screen. So now you're talking about, now I got to get Disney, I got to get an HBO Max on my own, you know? And now you're going to start looking at the cost of multiple apps, right? Versus if you have Comcast and it gives you all of it as streaming. Let me, let me put it to you this way. You don't have to have Apple TV to watch an Apple TV program when you have something like cinema. Just to complete the, the question you had about the service, this is under the TV provider has been identified as Verizon. If I were to disconnect, it would tell me to come back in and, and put in a username and a password, and then the channel would light up again. Sometimes they give you, does everybody know what a QR code is? That, that box with all those? It's great when it's a QR code. You just show, put it on your phone, it reads it, it takes it right there, you hit the button, you log in, it's a lot faster. Others of them, you have to hit all kinds of buttons to do it. So, if live TV is important to you, if you want to see things, you know, as they're happening, delayed by, you know, 30 seconds a minute, whatever the streaming service is, then you have to consider some kind of a package. As far as Netflix, if we can't use Netflix anymore, because we're using our son's account, I'll just get the same content out of cinema. Cinema has, think of cinema, TTV, a lot of these different pro, a lot of these different applications. Think of them as like a search engine. There is no content actually in cinema. Cinema is an interface that shows you a database of movies and, and TV shows. So if you want to watch, my wife's a Chicago Wednesday person. If it was important for her, you know, to, to immediately start talking about it. So we don't watch it the night that it's on. And we don't really watch live TV, despite the fact that we can, because of the commercials. You go into something like this. If I want to go in to cinema, which very easily is very easily loaded, step-by-step -step instructions, you Google it. But if we go into TV shows and, you know, um, this isn't ours. I'm going to go into our history. And in our history, our Good Doctor, for example. So the Good Doctor is here. Here's the different seasons. Now, if I go all the way back to season one, there might not be it. Just the fact that it shows you the picture and just it gives you the description. If I go in to actually watch this episode, I need a source. I have a friend that, that says I pick a different person. It, it's a server. It's for some reason, and I haven't quite figured it out. Why somebody is going through the trouble and the expense of putting up a server to serve multiple people, I just know that if I want to watch the, the, the uh, pilot episode of The Good Doctor, then I can try for the best bandwidth. This tells you the size of it. And at some point, if you have um, throughput problems, you might want to pick a lower resolution because it's less to stream. But if I go in to here and I play it, You're watching The Good Doctor with no questions. Bill? Yes. To, to get back to John's question there about that, you have to keep in mind, Comcast isn't giving you anything. Mm -hmm. You're paying for all those, whether your son is paying for it or somebody else is they're paying for those additional things like Netflix, you know, Amazon mm -hmm. Prime, even HBO Max. Wow. If you have HBO, you get HBO Max through Comcast. But that's it. I, I, you're paying for them, so I don't know how long it's going to take them to figure out how to prevent you from using your son's thing. And stuff, but that's yeah. it's a different issue than cutting cable. I mean, well, Paramount Plus is a perfect example. You have to subscribe to Paramount Plus. Even though I have the app on my TV for Comcast, yeah. it doesn't work unless I have that. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. well, it's the same. It's the same for Netflix. It's the same for Amazon Prime. Yeah. You have right. to pay for those things. Yeah. That's right. So I mean, none, none of these are generally. A couple of them will give you something free, like uh, what Comcast gives you, like Peacock. Well, ne ne Netflix too. 
It's also common practice for them to give you a taste. So if you get the basic peacock, when you start using, when you go into peacock, you say, I want to watch that, and then it comes up with the thing that, well, you, you need a certain level of subscription to watch this. So it will, it will bring you in with a little bit of content, but everything you see, you can't necessarily watch with the free app without cost. Yeah. Unless, like I said, because of Walmart Plus, we get Paramount Plus. So, you know, that's how we get that feed for that particular... It's uh, just like YouTube, the, 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 we yeah. go to watch videos, not the YouTube TV. If you just go in there and watch videos, you'll see ads. But you can pay for a higher service on YouTube, and so that way you don't see ads. So, like Bill was saying, there's different levels of things. And the, the practical, continue one second, the practical, uh, to see this in, in the real world, YouTube is an app loaded on, and I can go into YouTube, and I can put in, uh, search for something. There is a subscription you can have to get rid of the commercials. But right. if I want to go in and search for something, and I don't know, Red Bull Racing for whatever reason, I'm just picking something, this is now probably going to kick in and start to preview this by playing a little bit. All right, make a lot of that. You can now go in and you can watch this, but after a certain amount of time, it's going to show you a commercial. If you don't want to see commercials, then you're looking at eight bucks a month to not have commercials. More. This is the ad before it's even playing. But at some point in the bottom, it says the video will play after the ad. Sometimes you can skip the ad. So there's the first ad, the second ad is coming, five, four, three, two, one. That's the end of the ad. So now this content is available to you. You're watching it. If this were a half an hour program, after about five, ten minutes, it's going to show you a short little commercial, just like watching live TV. Yes? Yeah. Oh, my question was. Once you have a connection to the internet, internet, once you're connected to the internet through cable or through a, a, a T-Mobile Cube, I was I just found out this morning it's up to fifty dollars. It was cheaper when they first announced it, but you can get a T-Mobile Cube for fifty dollars. So if would you say you're paying for your cable? Sixty uh, for cable. One oh eight because of your uh, internet. Uh, from just in. One oh eight. Okay. Because so, I'm not a new customer. There's a lot of people that are paying okay. a lot. So less he's paying one oh eight for his access to the internet, and that includes the router. If okay. you if you were to get a T-Mobile Cube for fifty bucks a month, right. that in theory would replace and eliminate his relationship with Comcast. Which I'm sure a lot of people would like to do. But those things you're, you're, if they're not YouTube, right? they're running off your internet. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, 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 it's an app. It's, it's an app, app but, and it streams through the internet, so it's yes. no extra charge. Yes. Yes. So I watch all my shows, and it doesn't cost us anything. We pay for we the just internet. We just pay for the, to have internet. That's it. So one of those. Lines that were listing saying if you get it in 10K, you get it in 10K. Yep. They're coming from whoever out there. They're all, yep, exactly. And how safety you know that is. I mean, we've been doing it for four years and we've never had a problem. And we know we know a lot of people. Well, so every once in a while you'll get a Japanese feed, but it, that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just that that somebody put it up there. So but it's a streaming is that, service. Is that accessible to a computer as well as a TV? It is, because I, the I, yes. But you can watch it on your laptop? Because I downloaded cinema to my tablet and my phone so that when I'm on an airplane, I can watch shows. But be aware that cinema is not compatible with all devices. It, you cannot load it on a Roku TV. Right. You can load it on a Fire Stick. You can load it on certain laptops. Can't load it on a Fire TV. I tried. Okay. You can't. Even, even with the developer on it? No, you can't. Okay. Let, let me just go. The Fire Stick, for example, just to give you an idea. The Fire Stick, if this were brand new out of the box, you would not be able to load or side load or whatever. The process of jailbreaking, as it's called, means that you have to go into... Um, yeah. Go to My Fire TV and you go into developer options. 
If the developer options aren't available, there is a way to turn them on because some of the sticks don't have them. But after you go into the developer options, you tell it it's allowed to install unknown applications or third-party applications. By doing that process, you don't have to do it once, then it's done. Once it's done, then you can load a program or an application like Cinema. Cinema is our pretty much go-to. I like the interface. You were, somebody was talking about interfaces before, whether you like one or not. I'm finding lately that Cinema, my brother uses a, uh, uses a phrase, that's the price of free. When it's free, there's really nobody to complain to because you're kind of getting something you shouldn't have anyway. So there's, there isn't, you know, uh, Mr. Mayor asked, you know, who do you call? You call one of your streaming buddies. I call, I call Jay Mr. Mayor, because he's always right. Anyway, um, when, you, when you're in cinema, spring work. That sometimes you, you can't get a fee. Right. So you have I to go picked a movie, else. and when the movie starts playing from the stream that's available, it plays a different movie. It's a wrong movie. Sometimes it comes out of a uh, foreign country where there's automatic Spanish subtitles that you can't get rid of. So this interface allows to sort by genre. I like to watch a lot of history. So I go into the history genre and it automatically filters. Instead of looking at everything, this is just showing stuff that's history based. And there's a little funnel at the end. You could say, I'm looking for a certain year. That's just the limits of this particular interface. I'm finding lately that sometimes with cinema, the content doesn't work. Finding what I want to watch in cinema, but then if I can't get a stream, I go over to TTV. I'm sorry, yeah, I go over to TTV, which is just a different way of watching stuff. I search for the program and I use their streams because they're 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 sources because they're not always the same. All right, maybe one or two more questions. Yeah. Like Anybody else? I, I know you guys set up an email address for questions, but I suspect that you're going to get a lot of the same questions without an email. Does it make more sense to set up a Facebook page? That We did discuss that. Yeah. Did you talk yeah. to uh, Joanne? This way you're answering the question. Read, read other questions. I know sometimes you don't even know the question to ask. Yeah. So it helps to be able to go through like a block. I guess we're going to start off slowly with an email address. Um, we know there's at least one Facebook page called HP Peeps. And we've seen a lot of communication on that already. The question is, that was the real design of HP Peeps and the intent. It could get inundated, and I haven't spoken to the, the administrators of it to see if that's a platform we want to migrate to. Yeah, we could do that too. Um, but again, we're going to start off at least initially with streaming and we migrate to a Facebook page. We the problem with the Facebook page, page is you have to have somebody who's willing to be the administrator. Well, the people answering the questions will be right. But if what you have. Yeah. But the benefit, the benefit, I understand. else that has the same question unless they can't see it. Well, we're going to try to create a. A distribution list of all the email addresses that are on the back. It could be live, as you can tell from here. So it's important if you didn't sign in, please do so on the way out and put your email address that we at least start off with that. And if we migrate to something else, depending on the level of uh, you know interest and questions, we may migrate to a Facebook page. We thought about it. Uh, I'm not sure we want to use HB Pizza because again, we want to do something else. Thank you so much. All right, everybody.